Hey there, Truth Seeker. Welcome to my channel and community, where we focus on developing the knowledge, understanding, and wisdom to accelerate your ascension into the fifth dimension and higher if you are keen. For those returning, welcome back, and a massive hello to the new subscribers or listeners. My name is David Keratin. I am a galactic astrologer, author, philosopher, indigo warrior, and EDM DJ. Feel free to check out my playlist. Today we are going to talk about a particular subject, the seven soul secrets. When I cast an astrological chart, apart from the planets we all know like Venus, Mars, the Sun, and the Moon, also available to consult our sophisticated and powerful data points called Arabic parts or lots. They have names like the part of spirit, fortune, courage, and fraud. These astrological archetypes offer incredible insights into the life planned carefully by your higher self before reincarnation. There are dozens of these parts or lots, but I have packaged them into what I call the seven soul secrets, and this is what we will talk about today. I am excited to bring you this labor of love, so enjoy. Caitlin is going to read for us. Beautiful souls, let us begin with a story. Reincarnation and astrology are described in the myth of Er, a legend that concludes Plato's Republic. Written in the Socratic method, the Republic is a form of literary debate designed to stimulate critical thinking. The story of Er greatly influenced philosophical and scientific thought for many centuries. Er, son of Armenios of Pamphylia, dies in battle. When the dead are collected after ten days, mysteriously, his body has been preserved. He returns to the living and details his near-death experience. As Er journeys through the afterlife, he sees new souls waiting to incarnate. Each soul takes part in a lottery. When their number comes up, they step forward to choose their next life, one best suited to their evolutionary development. Following selection, the soul is assigned a guardian spirit, personified in our ascendant or rising sign. When traveling from the other side, the soul passes under Lady Necessity's throne, to the plain of oblivion where the river of forgetfulness flows. The soul is then required to drink from the cup of amnesia. For this reason, we initially enter life with a sense of alienation from our higher self. Reincarnation catalyzes separation anxiety, which follows us until we resolve it with shadow work and emotional integration. The soul's journey is revealed in seven soul secrets that describe the obstacles and opportunities we chose to evolve our consciousness. These are the mirrors and the matches for our ego mind to discover that our personality is a temporary facade we use only for this life. Each secret is called a lot, hence the expression, you have a lot in life. In some sacred texts, they are called Arabic parts, although the reason for this is unclear. One of them are part of spirit, is the portal to our higher self. In my unique galactic astrology readings, we use ancient techniques to discern the seven soul secrets that goes back to the Egyptians, Mayans, and Persians. Do you want to know, for example, what your higher self has in mind for this incarnation? Or which house contains your good fortune? Perhaps warnings about fraud and guidance on love are of interest? The Arabic parts are mathematical points, or perspectives that offer profound insights into the divine design for your life. Of course, astrology is built on the concept that the wheel turns each time we die only to be reborn. The story of reincarnation, as told by Plato, is magical. After choosing their lots, all souls have their lives confirmed by the three fates. The latter select a time when the planetary bodies are perfectly aligned to ensure one's horoscope supports the chosen life. The three fates in Greek are named Clotho, Lachesis, and Atropus. Clotho spins the thread, Lachesis dispenses it, and Atropus cuts it, signifying the moment when we pass. The Romans called them Nona, Decuma, and Morta. Together, the three fates represent birth, life, and death. Your astrology chart contains the GPS coordinates for your journey through this incarnation. Soul Secret Number 1 the part of fortune, symbolized by the moon. Before you incarnated, you agreed to settle three lots of karma. One, your own. Two, a portion from your family called Samskara, and three, a chunk of planetary miasma for which we are all responsible as guests of Mother Earth. 
At the same time, you carefully matched your karmic baggage with your skill set and talents. Combined, these are your spiritual inheritance which the fates call your fortune. When you actively align with your inner truth through practice, you trigger your resolve. Fortune emerges when you contemplate, earnestly, your cosmic inheritance. You then uncover what you came here to do. Your north and south node hold important, additional insights to past life records. Once you discover your soul mission, you reignite latent talents. Yet this is more than being a passionate advocate for a cause. Fortune describes your path to fulfillment once you open destiny's doorway. Astrologer John Frawley describes fortune as the pearl of great price, where your springs of living water flow. When you draw this energy in, you unlock mental, emotional, and spiritual abundance. Fortune may represent worldly success, career, or vocation. Still, it can also describe your nemesis, which arises when your feminine energy is ignored or suppressed. And yes, this applies to the guys as well. We all vacillate between positive and passive interaction with the world, just as the moon with her cycles. She is full in all her glory once a month, and other times, you cannot see her at all. Your part of fortune will help you accurately decode what is happening with the karmic load you agreed to resolve, because here you can assimilate your spiritual inheritance. When fortune plays her hand, she will influence your actions and activities in the world whether you like it or not. Why? Her cards are the echoes of karma booming through time and space. How conscious you are of spirit's influence in your life will determine how you react in the now timeline and what perspectives you take. Soul secret number two, the part of spirit, symbolized by the sun. The part of spirit and fortune are entangled. Fortune represents actions we take to redeem and reconcile our karmic load. Spirit, on the other hand, contemplates and considers. The part of spirit is, therefore, an aspect of our benevolent higher self who intercedes between dimensions. Unfortunately, our spirit, or higher self, becomes obscured by early childhood experiences, much like an eclipse where the sun covers the moon. We begin life on earth as a tabula rasa. Throughout our infancy, we operate in the alpha and theta brainwaves. We move seamlessly between wakefulness and sleep until ages five to seven. We are open to experiences and instinctively create. At some point, our ego matrix begins to form. The period at which this occurs is not defined explicitly in psychology, but this is essential knowledge on the ascension pathway. The key to unlocking the dance between our spirit and fortune is to understand the three levels of awareness. One, our instincts, which are housed in our soul memories, or part of fortune. Two, our intellect, which is our left brain IQ and ego matrix. Three, our right brain creative intelligence, which connects us to source through our third eye and heart. Superhuman capabilities are unlocked when all three are consciously combined. Our instincts and intellect return and station us in the past for they are repositories of memory. Whereas our creative intelligence entangles us in the quantum spiral of evolution. Where would you prefer to be? Stuck in a karmic loop or opening the doors of perception? Before you can quantum leap, take time to consider the seven soul secrets revealed in your chart. Here are clues that you created on the other side that will help you peel back the layers of ego protection to reveal the still small voice emanating from beyond the veil. Spirit communicates quietly through our pineal gland and sensory perception. She also speaks through delicious serendipity and synchronicity. So-called random people, places, situations, and scenarios. Let us look at an example. Someone has their part of spirit in Gemini or the third house which suggests that excessive intellectualism could be obscuring their intuition. Conversely, this individual may not be using IQ's full power to interpret their actions or activities. So, bringing some thinking and data to one's consciousness might be the remedy in this scenario. Spirit is out of reach for those consumed and distracted by material acquisition. However, for the seeker who can integrate their spirit and fortune, the future is bright. When thinking and feeling converge, we are supercharged. Soul secret number three, the part of valor, bravery, and courage, symbolized by Mars. 
Valor is typically associated with battles, the military, and law enforcement. Courage, from the old French, means heart, temperament, and state of mind. In the context of spiritual alchemy and ascension, the part of courage is where, in our life, we must bring our highest virtue and ethical considerations to our decisions. Courage is intensely personal, and only you will know what is best. The opportunity with this part is to balance the karmic wheel and stop it from turning against you in the future. Many expressions apply here, such as being caught between a rock and a hard place. Similarly, Occam's razor says that the simplest explanation is usually the right one. Virtue signaling is vogue these days as many seem to have lost their moral compass, drifting from their true north. Cast on the seas of doubt and insecurity, we are short of courage in troubled times. Yet these fine qualities start in our hearts, and it is you, me, we, who must be the change we want to see in the world. Courage requires that we transcend our ego matrix. Like spirit, there are times when we must stop, think, and consciously make choices that are for our highest good. Courage asks, have you got the heart to do the right thing? Soul secret number four, the part of friendship and love, symbolized by Venus. Who said that it is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all? And who has heard this great quote, being deeply loved by someone gives you strength, while loving someone deeply gives you courage? Psychologists describe love as a set of emotions and behaviors characterized by intimacy, passion, and commitment. Love involves attraction, affection, and trust. Love can wax and wane over time. Associated with a range of positive emotions, love invokes happiness and fulfillment. There is an expression I like which is that people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. This simple mantra has guided me because it does not presuppose that all love is romantic. Many on the ascension path seek their twin flame. Yet, this type of profound relationship starts first with the sacred unification of one's male and female energies in spiritual alchemy. Known philosophically as the Hieros Gamos, Christ and Sophia's inner marriage is the merge of fortune and spirit within our rainbow body. From there, we are well placed to attract our twin flame naturally, organically, and divinely. Yet this part does not describe our lovers or friends. For this, we must look to the placement of your Juno, Venus, and the configuration of your 5th, 7th, and 11th houses. Love appears when we connect, collaborate, and commune with others. The house where love falls describes where you may experience an authentic and possibly karmic connection. However, the placement also provides a warning that overplaying your hand here might destroy or diminish love prospects. Remember that these seven soul secrets are interconnected, so love, courage, spirit, and fortune work together as a package, along with the other three parts, fraud, captivity, and victory. Love in the first house suggests that you are defined by how and who you love. You will want to project this to the world, and it is easy to see how this approach might consume you. In the second house, your love will be grounded, practical, and functional. In the third house, love, or friendship, will revolve around constant communication, chit-chat, and probably some deception marked by the twin's sign. In the fourth house, love of home and family will be your touchstone. In the fifth, art and creativity is where you will gel with friends and attract a mate. However, the likelihood of egomania is high. Not all love will be roses and fluffy ducks. Love in the eighth house could be manipulative, challenging, and dark, because this is what fate has served up to settle karmic baggage. Love in the tenth could be about the benefits of combined social status, or the downside of career climbing at all costs. The shadow love here is a public shame. The proverbial fall from grace when love is defiled. We see this regularly in the cancel culture, where high-profile lovers, citing irreconcilable differences, duel in the public domain. Love in the twelfth might be platonic as you seek oneness with spirit and the hermetic lifestyle. The famous psychotherapist Nathaniel Brandon once said, love is the longing for permanence and the inevitability of change. Brandon's book The Psychology of Romantic Love is highly recommended. Soul Secret Number 5, The Part of Despair, Penury, and Fraud, Symbolized by Mercury 
The seven soul secrets were chosen by you on the other side of the veil. Therefore, before arriving here on earth, you were fully cognizant that life would have some downside. You agreed on a higher dimensional level to balance or reconcile various karmic lots accumulated from other lifetimes. As a reminder, there are three types of karma. One, our own, two, family, and three, planetary. All of us have karmic portions to work through. The location of your part of despair, penury, and fraud provides substantial clues that reveal the karmic load you chose to resolve or balance. What excellent knowledge to have. Let me assure you, life will change dramatically once this soul secret makes sense to you. Fraud in the first house, for example, might show up as being easily persuaded by a snake oil salesman who flatters to deceive. In the seventh, the home of contracts, penury might show up as deceptive agreements. Despair could lead to a well-publicized fall from grace in the tenth, because you took a career-defining role without having your wits about you. I have my part of fraud in my second house, conjunct my Jupiter. I was constantly reminded, through events, situations, and circumstances, to mindfully manage my resources. Not that I took any notice. When I discovered this soul secret, I changed my attitude. I now welcome trials and tests. I thank spirit for them, and almost by magic, they are happening less frequently. A sign that the karmic load relating to fraud and despair has been balanced or cleared entirely. And yes, karma does run its course. You can be free of it, forever. But let us step back for a moment. In the part of spirit, I discuss that our higher self is colored by our ego because of childhood experiences, good and bad. As a tabula rasa or blank slate, we are a sponge for between five and seven years. We absorb, unfiltered, the energies of our human guardians, siblings, and parents. We had no choice. Physiologically, brain functions we use as adults to screen out negative or harmful content did not come online until well into our childhood and teenage years. Biologically, we were dependent. We are not victims because we chose our family, but we can feel that way. And here is the trick of despair, fraud, and penury. The puzzle we must overcome with our mental processes, which is the domain of Mercury and Gemini. Fraud and despair happen to us out of the blue because we remain unconscious that karma echoes through time across dimensions. In the mirrors of life, what unfolds are the repercussions of past decisions bearing fruit in the now moment. However, once we bring awareness to this vitally important soul secret, we suddenly take control of our choices. Karma progressively loses its power to disrupt us. You all know the expression, fool me once, fool me twice. Once you wake up to your karma, it begins to shrivel and wither away. Such is the gift of this part. Mercury, the winged messenger, is the ruler of data mining and left brain intellect. He is also the lord of the third house, which covers relationships with siblings if you had any. I mention this because we learn to think by mimicking and observing. Monkeys see monkeys do is a simple but profound insight into how we all grow up. The concept of learning peer-to-peer -peer, by osmosis defines our childhood experiences. Much of what we know we bury due to emotional trauma. So here is a key to emancipation, sovereignty and freedom. You must use your left brain to think and your right brain to perceive. Many of us are using predominantly one side, without the other. To think clearly, one must go back to childhood to uncover faulty learning, which can be tough to do. We may have to admit that our siblings, teachers, or parents did not have the full picture. Or that our cherished beliefs, values, and identifications are no longer valid. As a mechanism, the ego is exceptionally skilled, but recall that it is a facade we chose only for this lifetime. Therefore, our mental and emotional constructs are fabricated. They emerged in childhood based on historical situations. When we rely on our ego consciousness to guide us, we consign ourselves to living in the past. For it can be no other way. Ego is built by the infant child, who, in an unfiltered state, attempts to make sense of multiple, often contradictory, inputs. Our ego does not create. It sustains. 
Once you identify your part of penury, fraud, and despair, the house and sign that it dwells in, you immediately, confidently, zero in on your karma. You discover major blind spots interfering with your happiness. Soul secret number six, the part of captivity, prisons, and escape, symbolized by Saturn. Saturn has many faces and guises. He is depicted as the devil, a goat-like figure with domain over the seven deadly sins in the ancient tarot. Considered a malefic in astrology, Saturn is the guardian of tests and training that the ego will be subject to. The legendary Saturn return every 28 to 30 years portends pain, suffering, and loss. Books are filled with lore and legend about Saturn as a merciless taskmaster and reaper of souls. Many blame the goat for their problems and identify him as the lord of karmic retribution. Like all planetary energies, Saturn is an archetype, a psychological trigger that exists within our soul monad. For this reason, we instinctively respond to the narratives about Saturn or other well-known planetary engrams such as Mars, Venus, the Sun, and the Moon. The data cookies, if you like, in respect of all the older astrological signs exist within the shared subconsciousness of humanity. The Devil Tarot is an allegory. Two humans, a male and a female, are seduced by the material world. Consumed by physical pleasures, lust, and obsession with money, they became enslaved. The message is that we live in fear and bondage because we are weak-willed. We are spiritually ignorant and unaware. Humanity, according to Saturnian stories, chooses to stay in the dark. We are deceived by appearances and believe only in the physical realm. To some extent, this is true. When we look around, there is evidence of this everywhere. However, I am going to challenge the prevailing view of Saturn. There are no right or wrong planetary energies, in my opinion, so let us start there. Saturn is the Lord of Karma, which is the role assigned to him by Source. What is Karma? Simply put, it is energy in motion governed by the law of cause and effect. When we go back to Soul Secret 1 and 2, Fortune, and Spirit, we remember that we chose karmic debts to rehabilitate or reconcile in this incarnation. When we gaslight others, we are in denial of our own divinity. We chose this life in agreement with the three fates. Saturn will hold us to account, and he will enforce the law of cause and effect. Our instinctive understanding of Saturn is where the accountability comes from. I call this the cosmic conscience. The gift of Saturn is to be disciplined and masterful in our lives over the long haul. As the Lord of Time, Saturn's orbit takes nearly 30 years through the constellations. The pursuit of the seven soul secrets is no different, requiring time, commitment, and effort to follow through to victory. Now I have laid that out, captivity in the first house, for example, suggests you will be enslaved by your ego and image. In the second house, enslaved by material resources, in the third, ensnared by your thinking and what you talk about. The proverbial loose lips sink ships. In the fourth house, captivity might be over obsession with safety and the family home. These are simple illustrations intended to paint a picture. Captivity in the eleventh house could express as the launch of a well-intentioned but disorganized humanitarian project. Imprisonment in the twelfth house may refer to an overemphasis on spiritual pursuits such that you become totally disconnected from the material world. Saturn in the twelfth could also refer to the incredible discipline put forward by the Tibetan monks and Zen masters, which benefits us all. With that said, let us objectively consider the ego or fortune's path through the astrological houses. To recap, fortune represents our spiritual inheritance that contains the three karmic lots we chose, one each from personal, family, and planetary miasma. The planetary karma is our collective green consciousness. We instinctively recognize that we, humanity, are treating the planet with contempt. Mother Earth deserves better. Our inheritance also includes our gifts and talents that we must reactivate, which, when utilized, will help us to quickly settle our karmic debts. As we have talked about, the problem is that most people forget about their part of spirit, which is the doorway to our higher self. In doing so, they become enslaved, captivated, and imprisoned to the lower nature of physicality. 
Therefore, the part of captivity is the sole secret that makes or breaks each human's life on planet Earth. Saturn holds us to account for what we do or do not do. There is a physical third-dimensional timeline that begins in Aries and finishes in Capricorn, Saturn's house. The ego consciousness, if left alone, will not progress beyond the tenth house. And herein lies the truth and illusion of the part of captivity, prisons, and escape. When we consciously synthesize our fortune and spirit, we open both sides of our nature. The physical and the spiritual. We access our left brain intellect, represented by Mercury. Then we supercharge our prospects by engaging our right brain creativity, symbolized by the Moon and Venus. Conversely, suppose we do not grasp the profound messages of the seven soul secrets. In that case, we will never get to experience spiritual victory, represented by Jupiter. As you will see, victory is not specifically about material wealth. No, it is about karmic resolution. The cool thing is that you can have material and spiritual victory. They are not mutually exclusive. However, it requires all the parts working together in harmony, fortune, spirit, courage, love, despair, and escape to achieve this exalted status. Eventually, there will be no more karma for you when the cycle of reincarnation is broken. That is the promise of the seven secrets, victory, and triumph of the soul. Escape from the prison of Saturn to new worlds beyond Capricorn. Your personal magnum opus is achieved, and you experience quintessence. You drink of the golden chalice and carve your name, immortal, into the philosopher's stone. When you look back over the first five soul secrets, you will see how the journey unfolds. We start in childhood, we understand that our ego is constructed under false pretenses. We recognize, through the different parts, especially courage and fraud, that we must think. To evolve spiritually and emotionally, we cannot be mindlessly swept along in feelings and perceptions. So, it is from this perspective that we fall into captivity. We enter the prison of our own accord. We play Stockholm Syndrome. We gaslight, blame, and shame, for this is the game of life, as most perceive it to be. We willingly walk into a prison. To be clear, Saturn is a hard taskmaster. As an archetype, he cannot be avoided. We are accountable for our actions. We are both the cause and effect of our lives and our karma. These are Saturn's teachings. I regard Saturn as an asset to our development and the seven soul secrets fruition. Once you know that material success, however you define that, for many people, requires that they sell their soul, you can choose another way. When you realize that you can have both material and spiritual success, you can thank him for his tests. The bifurcation of timelines happens in the home of Saturn. Those who allow their mind to be captured and imprisoned will return for another karmic cycle. Those who integrate their fortune and their spirit with love and courage will prosper. Those who master fraud and captivity will experience the seventh soul secret, victory, symbolized by Jupiter. They will reach this nirvana because they positively applied Saturn's techniques of discipline, focus, and commitment. Soul secret number seven, the part of victory, triumph, and aid, symbolized by Jupiter. Jupiter is associated with the principles of growth, expansion, healing, and prosperity in most astrological systems. Sagittarius, metaphysics, philosophy, and existentialism are his domain. As the ruler of philosophical systems and the higher mind, Jupiter shapes culture. Jupiter energies include sophisticated art, writers, academics, thought leaders, and teachers. Given that this is the seventh soul secret, the location in your chart will represent the potential for augmentation, enlargement, and diversification. In simple terms, more. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Namaste.